after seven years of being the vocations director, how did you become a parish priest? What happened? Did <laughs> yeah. the, the cardinal call you up after the school year was over? Yeah. So um, when I started out as vocation director, the cardinal said, Dad, um, why don't you serve for five years? Okay. And after that, we'll talk. So I jumped in. I served as vocation director. It was hard, but I get used to it. I grow into it. And, and after five years, I knew that it was time for me to go to a parish. I have to discern what parish I want to sign up for. And, but he said, no, I, I need you to work some more. So I served for two more years. I served seven years. Okay. In fact, that's, that's fairly long for vocation director. Because, um, you know, as vocation director, you need a lot of energy. You need okay. to be be out there with the young people while at the same time involved in formation. So mm-hmm. I literally see a lot of vocation director come and go during my time because a lot of them maybe do three years, four years, but I was in there for seven years. Because it takes a lot out of you. Yeah. yeah. Plus, uh, yeah, you need renewing, you need new energy. So, I, so after seven years, it was time for me to, because you need fresh idea and things. I, I was, after seven years, I think I've, I've, I've done a lot, but also, um, it was time for me to be a pastor. I've, a lot of my classmates have become pastors. So I was wondering, um, I knew I've already extended two more years than, than originally planned. So I know after seven years that I would be in a parish. So okay. uh, the court, which was in one of our meetings said, Father, Dad, um, there's a, there's a, I need to open up a parish and you're finishing if you take a, a a priest from a parish and move, it's very hard because it, it affects, it's like a domino effect. Yes. But with me, it might be a bit easier because I don't have a, really a parish yet so he can just yank me out and put me. Would you pray about uh, the uh, possibility of maybe starting a parish? I just need a priest over there right now. And since you're finishing up, I said, sure, Cardinal, I, I would pray about it. And, uh, it was kind of excited. You know, I've never been a pastor before, so I was looking forward to be a pastor. But on the other hand, the idea of starting a parish from scratch said, wow, that's uh, challenging but exciting. You know, I, I, generally speaking, I'm a pretty adventurous guy. I went through a lot of stuff in my life. So I think, you know, this, this will be exciting. Yes. So uh, I, I brought it to prayer. And uh, so I discerned. And uh, I had, I came up, you know, I wrote pro and cons of whether or not I, I should say yes. Okay. I'm thankful for the coroner for inviting me to discern. He said, just don't, you don't need to just say yes to me. Go and pray about it. Okay. That's so beautiful. So grateful for that. So I went to pray and I pray. And as I pray, I write down a list of if I should go, if I should not go. Uh-huh. And the list of what I should that I shouldn't go is is longer than the, the list of yes. Oh, really? <laughs> because I feel very <laughs> incompetent. I'm very honored to be asked, but wow, I've never been a pastor before, and I uh, uh, and to start out a parish from scratch, I thought I'd need some experience. So you thought that. maybe a senior priest would be better. That's right. Yeah, someone who have already have parish, someone who built. Another funny thing is. When I was a seminarian in my parish, there was building a lot and the priests always talk about money. And I, I told myself when I was seminarian, if I ever become a priest, I'll never build. All uh-huh. the priests can build, I'm just going to focus on building the community. Okay. All the priests, <laughs> that, that's not my call. See how God has a sense of humor. <laughs> so when I did the I said, yeah, I don't, like, I don't like to talk about money. I don't want to build. It's not really about the talk. It's just about building God's kingdom, right? Mm-hmm. And at the time I thought it's the money talk. It's about building God's kingdom. But I, so I said, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm not good at that. I love to preach the gospel and the Lord, but uh, invite people to, uh, to, to pitch in money. I, I think maybe other priests can do that better than me. So, but on the other hand, God put a conviction in my heart. Like he gave me the image of this empty field and there's a tent in the middle of the field. This is during my discernment. Uh-huh. 
And I, I op- God invited me to walk toward this tent of, of this empty field. And I opened up the tent and inside was the altar and the, the blessed sacrament, like what we have here. Uh-huh. And from that blessed sacrament, the, t- the rays come forth and fire and it begin to catch fire and it burn and it spread over the field and it keeps spreading and spreading and spreading. And I was overwhelmed with deep peace. So that was, I just couldn't get out of that peace. So I went to the coroner and I present him my fruit of prayer. I said, coroner, I, I feel very incompetent and these are the reasons why I think that. You shouldn't. I shouldn't. Uh-huh. And these are the reasons why I think, I said, I can bring in some, some gifts. These are some of my limited gifts I have. Uh-huh. But also this is, but I, for some reason, I feel this deep peace that I couldn't get out because this image keep coming up. Even if the list of no's yeah. is longer than the list of yeses. And I even told him that uh, it's like God was calling to, I even told him maybe it'll be Divine Mercy Parish or something. Uh huh. This is, this is even before I was. So he said, okay, thank you. And he, he prayed about it. And I think he, he consulted with, with his, uh, his personnel board and, and then mid spring, uh, he asked me if I, I'd be willing to, to do it. I said, yes, Cornell, I certainly would. So I said yes to him and, and that was it. And, uh, so this is my first love as a pastor and I'm loving it. <laughs> That's awesome. 